Hello, everybody. Does this work? I assume it works. Good? Okay. All right, guys, we're going to get started. Uh, thanks for everybody uh, coming tonight, especially given that it's the first week of class. And of course, this is the first uh, lecture uh, in a series of lectures that we will have not every Thursday, but pretty close. Uh, it'll taper off towards the end as you get busier within your studios. But this is the first one of the year. We also welcome people who are watching live uh, online uh, and also who join us later. Um, tonight, I'm really excited to uh, welcome Giuseppe Falacara here at Lawrence Tech. I met Giuseppe last uh, summer. Is that right? I think it's last summer. It seems uh, like forever ago because it was warm and in Italy and not cold and in Michigan. Um, but uh, I felt immediately after we met and I saw his work that he was somebody that I would love one day to invite uh, to campus here to, to talk to students and faculty and to share his work. Uh, to give you some background, uh, Giuseppe is a, a, a professor of architecture and design in the Department of Civil Engineering and Architecture at the Polytechnic of Bari, which is in southern Italy, where he teaches architecture design and stereotomy. And his research focuses on revisiting stone architecture with particular theoretical and practical attention to stereotomy. He has published journal articles, built full-size prototypes, and held workshops pertaining to the subject. He's the head of the New Fundamentals uh, Research Group, a team of Italian architects and academics affiliated to the Polytechnic in Bari. He develops and research projects that deal with the relationship between innovation and tradition in architecture. And over the years, New Fundamentals has carried out research works on digital stereotomy, the history of construction, and sustainable housing in the Mediterranean area, and keeps its activities alive through teaching, learning, publishing textbooks, organizing lectures and workshops. They also supervise uh, PhD dissertations and master's thesis projects. Um, and I don't know if he has to work very hard to keep it alive because I think anytime I look at Arc Daily or some other current thing looking at the topic of stereotomy, uh, there is New Fundamentals Research Group, which is for good reason. So with that, Giuseppe, welcome, and we look forward to your talk. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And as uh, you can see on the screen, our topic today is stereotomy, a very ancient discipline applied to the building construction, mainly in stone and wood, that appears interesting also for the current research. First of all, I apologize for my English. Sorry for my accent, for, sorry if you, you find something strange. I will read my communication and I hope everything will be clear. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to interrupt me. I first thanks uh, very much Jim Stevens and the Dean uh, of the College of Architecture and Design of Lawrence Technological University for inviting me and for the kind of hospitality here in Detroit. Then I want to, tell, to thank all the present for your patience and attention to my lecture. Synthesizing, I will show you a new idea of stone architecture architecture made by discrete, constructive, and compressed element in perspective of stereotomy. My research on stereotomy started about 70 years ago with my PhD <coughs> dissertation. The interest uh, around stereotomy started to reawaken in the early 1990s with the research into the fields of history of construction. This new favorable cultural climate has allowed rediscovering the discipline both for the historical value and the unexpressed design possibilities. The diffusion of 3D digital modeling and digital fabrication tools create an ideal condition to design and build new object of architectural element of stereotomic design, characterized by considerable geometric complexity. Stereotomy is a know-how for constructive design, and for this reason, it's important to know its history, to preserve it, and to continue to spread it. Speculation about architectural form based on the use of stereotomy marked an historical relevant peak between the 16th through the 18th century, followed by a sudden break at the beginning of 19th century. 
from the half of the 18th century, century as the result of a changed Weltanschauung world vision, classical stereotomy began to show undeniable signs of weakness. It was considered unable to produce anything but superfluous formal structure, which failed to meet requ required needs. Blondel asserted that a good architect uh, had to prefer verosimilitude naturalism to the pretension arrogance of stereotomy. <laughs> on the other hand, is uh, on, on the other hand is uh, worth mentioning that in those very years, stereotomy was turned into a school subject, thus reinventing itself. This structuring was performed at the time in the Col du Génie du Mézier, one of the first military engineering school in Europe, in French. From his establishment in 1748, before the coming of Gaspard Monge, the father of descriptive geometry, the teaching of stereotomy went behind the sheer utilitarian aspect of decline technique. The founder of the Col du Génie du Mézier explicitly specified this art provides such an exact and accurate knowledge of the drawing of the plan and surface and the weight of expressing the relief uh, they propose to represent to be considered by the same standard as Euclid element. The Col de Beaux-Arts and the Col Polytechnique, representative of the field, uh, of the field of architecture and engineering respectively, share from the beginning of 19th century the common teaching of the subject of stereotomy, although they had specific curricula and teaching program. This subject was regarded as the most appropriate in encouraging students to build space and stimulate creativity. In those years, a stereotomy became the pivotal subject in the first years of education of both the student of the Col de Beaux-Arts and the polytechnicians. We know that the great 19th century architects studied stereotomy during their basic formation. Just to name some of the great ones, Eugène viollet le duc Anthony, Anthony Gaudi, Philippe d'Ernesto Basile, and many more. It's clear that this specific knowledge has pushed their project into innovative architectural realization. Right now, it is possible to think that the marvels of European, French, Spanish, and Portuguese stereotomic construction between the 16th and 19th century are only tied to the historical memory? Is it possible that the secret hidden within the magical vault of the city hall of Harle are no longer applicable to the architecture today? Is it possible to believe that the technical knowledge of such vaulted spaces of European tradition, and in particular of the Mediterranean basin, as a cradle of origin of stereotomy, has been lost to us? It's possible to believe that the ancient language of stone architecture has been divorced from modern structural system and method of construction? I believe not. I believe to the contrary that the need to return to the study and construction of stereotomic vaults renewed by a modern architectural vocabulary that celebrate the materiality of stone is extreme importance today. This is my first true real experimentation, my home. This is a tribute to the ancient technique of the Apulian region, is the region where I live, and the technical uh, of the technique of construction, this vault, is typical uh, of uh, um, my region and my stone, limestone uh, material, and is named Star Vault. I, firm I firmly support, and thus I want to underline here, the importance of reintroducing the study of stereotomic culture among the main basic teaching within the architecture and the engineering degree courses all over the world, as it was in the past. Here you can see some of my exercise that I made with my student of building construction one, the second year, at NYIT this year, is are the little pavilion in the stone, th thinking about some pavilion in Central Park. I emphasize that despite stereotomy has nowadays no large place whatsoever in both new building practice and structural plane of education, the subjects start to become a focal point of interesting high-level speculative research, not only the results of partial and isolated research in the riverbed of the history of construction. 
Just to name some of the great ones, Philip Bloch at ATH of Zurich, Brandon Clifford at MIT of Boston, Jose Palacios at Enrique Rabasa at ENSAB of Madrid, my group of research, New Fundamental Research Group, and why not, Jim Stevens' experimentation. <laughs> <laughs> why not? D uh, the aim... <laughs> The aim of this research, I think, is to close the distance between practice and theory through the realization of some demonstration project. This stereotomic prototype describes an effort to demonstrate new application, feature, shape, and unexpected and unexpressed potential of stone or discrete construction method for a new contemporary design. The idea is to help the transfer and the spread newly appeared design technolo uh, te uh, technologies, educational method, and digital modeling supported by information technology in architecture. The continuous and rapid evolution of digital instrumentation for the conception and from finding in architecture has outlined the conflict between two terms, genotype and phenotype. The first refers to the genetic code of a form, and the second is the exterior aesthetic expression. Today, the attention of the designer seems to be more sensitive to the conception and construction of a genetic code that, uh, than to the final aesthetic results. This is evident for the first time thanks to the digital tools that allow the design to conceive the form coding which represent the mathematical and topological code of all possible formal variation in, on a single team. However, I would like to draw attention to the phenotype, which is the precise object of the design goal, is the crystallized moment in which science becomes an aesthetic and artistic choice. The artistic phenotype, like a marble sculpture, is a condition that no code co can ever fully conceive. It is the set of the cultural complex that needs to be researched and poetically sublimated is to be find the great masterpieces of the past and the attendance of great personality. The great man, says Gian Lorenzo Bernini, if they want, can considerably shorten the path to those who start. To the young academy will give the rules of the art, but rarely and almost never the rules of the artist. Bernini says, we must follow three things, see, hear the great man, and practice them. It's important to note here that the most of the formal innovation and application, especially for the stone, derive from the knowledge and reflection of the architecture of the past. The study of ancient monuments make it possible to understand the technical and building expertise and attempt to go further, following the famous phrase of Bernard de Chartres, who says that one could look further by standing off the shoulders of the giants. Here we are on the Philibert Delorme, a great architect of France Renaissance, the father of the stereotomy, the treatise of the stereotomy. Here we are on the Philibert Delorme shoulders. The study of the past helps and train us to the beauty. Here we are in the famous uh, uh, Chapelle d'Annette in, uh, in France, and we, we can see the transfer of this basic idea of the construction of the dome also in uh, some other new uh, construction in New York, the Swiss Bank and the uh, uh, Central Library. Let's go back to the conceptual basis of the discipline. If, you, if we observe the current research on the construction of the form or form finding speculation, we can notice a great attention to the curved space and the vaulted pavilion. I'm sure that there is a constant and innate and perhaps unconscious desire to represent the celestial vault as the ancient idea of the sky at the basis of the design of the vaulted space of the secret classroom of monument and cathedrals. I want to present here the bond that exists between the building of the ancient idea of the sky and stereotomy. I will try to, do, to demonstrate this fundamental relation between the stereotomy and the idea of the shape of the heavens by analyzing in detail the etymology of the word stereotomy. In particular, the term stereotomy in the architectural literature 
was used for the first time in 1644 in L'Examen des Oeuvres de Sieur des Argues, written by Jacques Curebel, one of the most appreciated master mason. In his writing, the author examined and strongly criticized the previous text concerning the geometry applied to the stone cutting written by Girard des Argues, the father of prospective geometry. It's useful to note that the term stereotomy ap appeared here in the treatise of uh, Curabel for the first time without the support and specific terminological description or etymological derivation. It was normally used to refer to the section of solid, probably deriving from the union of two Greek words, stereo equal solid and tomia equal cut. Here you can see some example through the portrait of Fra Luca Pracioli with a student, uh, an example of the logic of the cutting stone. If you see in detail, the art of cutting stone, cutting solid using the water, in this case, give us the possibility to understand what is the shape that uh, become after the cutting of stone. And so, thanks to these techniques, uh, all the three basic techniques of stereotomy uh, was born, tomomorphia, tomographia, and tomotechnia. One of the interesting questions is, how did Curabel, a simple mason, coined the Greek term stereotomy? If we try to investigate what geometry, heart measurement, was in the Christian doctrine, we will arrive to discover an important conceptual link connecting to stereotomy. And well known, a very ancient Christian representation of the world was ideated in the sixth century by Cosma Indicopeleuster. Thinking about the biblical tabernacle, Cosma in his Christian topography asserted that the cosmos was a rectangle with an arch covering the flat pavement of the earth. According to the Cosmas tabernacle model, the curved vo vault was hidden by the veil of the veil, sorry, <laughs> the veil of the star events called stereoma of firmament in Latin, or the place where was fixed, uh, where uh, was uh, located the fixed star, firm star, like solid star, uh, motionless, objective, not substantive. It's important to underline the strong etymological affinity between the term stereotomy and the stereoma both derived from the Greek word astra, fixed star, and recalling somehow a vaulted space. The first one, stereotomy, referring to a real constructive dome, and the second one, or stereoma, the vault of perfect and geometric heavens. The only source of culture at that time, at the time of Kurabel, derived exactly from the Christian precept through the biblical tradition written in Greek or in Latin. We can thus affirm that an important paradox takes place. The misinterpretation of the shape of the cosmos, the error of the flat earth ecumene with the dome of the sky, has been at the basis of the realization of all the amazing architectural construction aiming to recall it. And so the idea to, to build the vaulted space it become to the misinterpretation of the shape of, of the um, heaven. And we can have a lot of interpretation of this idea. The belief that the sky was made by perfect geometric shape, referring to the alleged position of the fixed star, and according to the divine program, was challenged by Galileo Galilei. He clearly stated the demonstration of the random disposi disposition of the star, opposed to the idea of celestial geometry, divine and perfect, gave the slant for a new approach to the study of the shape of the universe that no longer contemplated the fixity of Euclidean geometry, and gave the birth to those who, who take the name of non-Euclidean and topological geometry, suitable uh, for the description of the shape of the universe. In any case, the curved, the curved shape and the tessellation of the space are arguments in common both for stereotomy and for the interpretation of the universe. You can see the, an application of Harmonia Mundi of Kepler to the imagination of the confirmation, uh, confirmation of, the, uh, of the space of the uh, universe. 
The vaulted space has always represented the ideal ambit in which to operate the more sophisticated and complex reflection, the construction of architecture. This is particularly true for stereotomic architecture. The curved shape with any mathematical complexity can be designed and built in two basic ways, with a tool that can draw the curve, for instance, compacts or algorithm or code or mathematic code, or by operation of bending and deforming a simple basic shape. This is totally etude from the topological point of view. The idea of potential flexibility and digital manipulation of the lithic vaulted space is at the basis of the method that links topology to stereotomy. It's, it's interesting to note that the term arc, arch for the Latin arcus, is containing the term bending from the Latin plicare in a top topological sense. Arcus and plicare bend is inside the word arcus. The idea starts from very simple consideration, that is the observation that most of the vaulted system can be imagined as a discontinuous structure like masonry wall that can be folder or deformer in order to obtain its geometrical final structural shape. For example, a stone wall can be theoretically bent to become a barrel vault, or going in on to be bent and become annual one, and thus become a helicoidal barrel vault. The metal becomes very interesting where more geometrical complex ashlar, ashlar is block of stone, are considered instead of individual cubical block. At the end of the form finding and the formation process, the more complex ashlar as assuming conformation that cannot be conceived through a canonical three-dimensional modeling. This method used the technique of topological transformation thanks to software providing three-dimensional modeling and parametric variational one, thus basing on the topological geometry and its function of deformation. As already stated, from a topological point of view, a plan and this role and the former final shape are equivalent. Therefore, a homomorphism between the flat rectangle and the cylinder is given. If we proceed by virtual bending the cylinder, we can get a toric surface that is topologically equivalent to the cylinder and consequently to the rectangle of the beginning. By using some uh, tools for 3D, uh, 3D transformation and volumetric deformation of the shape, a correspondence between a flat surface and a spatial one is realized. The modeling process is thus consi uh, considered as a flexible sculpture of three-dimensional digital data. Every, simple, uh, uh, every uh, um, single starting shape, maybe a parallel pipe, or sphere, or set of basic solid, can be modified by means of parametrical topological deformation to achieve the degree of complexity of the design, desired final object. This method was used by me and my group of research with excellent results during, uh, during uh, uh, numerous and uh, um, experience of new generation voltage space and uh, for the production of expositive prototype and uh, Penture presenting during cultural events since 2005. Here you can see one of the first uh, uh, prototype in 2006 was the entrance gate of the Biennale of Architecture of Venice. It was uh, very interesting because that was the final results of my PhD thesis is uh, the, um, uh, the entry gates uh, directly connected to the exposition uh, city of stone. And so you can imagine uh, the first prototype realized uh, in one important exposition. So a lot of people come uh, in, <laughs> in, in, uh, in outside this uh, dome. And so uh, there, there are no glue, no steel, it's only compressive vault. In this case, the object of topological manipulation have been referring to two well-known French patents belonging to the 1699 and known uh, as flat vaults, voûte plate. And so I will show you uh, the, 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 the deformation of the original patent of uh, uh, the engineering, French engineering. In, um, in this case, we use uh, the limestone of our region. Uh, the name is Pietra Leccese. 
one of the, uh, this, this patent uh, is one of the most interesting technical and stylistic speculation of the stone cutting. Historical realized very few times. The first uh, uh, license patent considering this construction was ideated in the French by a French engineer named Joseph Abey. The patent was published in 1699 in Machine et Invention Approuvé par l'Académie uh, Royale des Sciences, des Sciences uh, in Paris. Um, here you can see uh, the basic pattern uh, was uh, um, deformed in cylindrical way, and so deforming the flat uh, pavement, uh, the flat vault uh, the, of the original patent, we passed from one unique block to using two different ashlar uh, able to cover the entire uh, uh, entrance gaze. The static behavior of such solution is the same of a bidirectional slab floor, uh, flo uh, slab floor structural system, working identically in both directions. Each of the ashlar is supported in such a way that the vault is working only after completion. Such static condition allow us to consider such structure belonging to the structure called reciprocal frame structure. This was one of the first examples of stone reciprocal structure, because the reciprocal structure is normally made by wood construction. And so in this plan of the treatise of uh, uh, Frazier, you can see the reference, the link between the reciprocal frame in stone and reciprocal, original reciprocal frame in wood. And so starting from, uh, uh, from this uh, um, operation, starting from the study of this specific traditional ashram, it's possible to invent new geometry and new uh, conformation for the tessellation of the vaulted space. Planar configuration, vertical or horizontal, cylindrical shape, and geodetical spherical geometry. Here is uh, uh, just a variation of the original uh, patent of, uh, of uh, um, Abbey. And so, in the first one, you have a square uh, geometry uh, basic, and here you, we, we play with uh, a uh, hexagonal uh, geometry. From a mechanical point of view, this kind of vault is work after completion, after that all the, uh, the blocks are uh, assembled together. And here was some picture of the first experimentation that we made in France in the laboratory of Ile d'Abo near to Lyon uh, to test for the first time the real uh, uh, resistance of this kind of vault. And I assure you, you that it's real completely uh, strongly and completely resistant. And so uh, the idea uh, was to imagine some variation starting from the planar configuration to the barrel vault and also to the spherical one, because the idea is to create also the geodesic vault using this kind of ashlar, this kind of pattern. And after this uh, uh, first experimentation, we have the chance to uh, build really uh, this dome for the first minister of the Qatar, uh, uh, Doha, and uh, for his personal uh, uh, Turkish bath. And so that was uh, some picture during the, the construction. And uh, this is one of the pictures that I take during the construction. Here we have eight meters of uh, diameter of the dome, and uh, I assure you that this kind of conformation uh, with the, all these uh, porosity and all these uh, um, geometric shape are really similar to the, even to the, the sky, you know. And from, starting from this uh, kind of observation, so only the logic of changing the shape, the basic shape, other project was made by other students of GSA of uh, uh, Paris, uh, L'Ecole de Paris Malaké. And so here we are in Jericho, and uh, is the same technique using a triangular conformation. And so we, 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 we start with my student to imagine different other composition. The, the, the portrait that you see here, the, the drawing is uh, uh, made from uh, some exposition in Paris. And so 
focus the attention of the art of this technique, because I think that we can speak about heart of the stereotype, the heart of cutting stone. Um, so that's our other configuration that we worked with the student during uh, the third year project. And the idea is always to work in project, in design, and also in real demonstration, real realization. And so we, we work uh, and uh, parallel in two ways, for a real constructive and uh, for design speculation. And so we, 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 we can uh, finally, we can, uh, we can organize, we can uh, um, invent some new uh, system of uh, um, tessellation of the space using the logic of subdivision of the space and optimization of the, the geometry and the uh, productive construction. Here, one of the last experimentation made uh, with uh, my group of research, the idea was to use two different uh, uh, material, black and uh, uh, white marble, in order to, to show the, the, the thickness and so the different kind of geometry that we can obtain uh, cutting the stone uh, using complex geometry. The latter is perhaps the most interesting, this one is the most interesting speculative uh, configuration, and is representing the elegant approach ideated in, in 1704 by the Carmelite Jean Truchet, also known as Father Sebastian Truchet, to solve the problem of the pyramidal holes uh, present in solution of a bay. Truchet's solution was described in Memoir Concernant les Voutes Plates, in Recueil de l'Académie Royale des Sciences, uh, toujours in Paris, uh, always in Paris, in uh, uh, 1704. Uh, we use this, uh, uh, this unique technique and uh, this interesting interlocked joint shape solution for many interesting structural exper ex experimentation uh, during workshop with engineering and architectural students. Here is, was the, one of the m most interesting experimentation. Uh, we, uh, during one summer school in Madrid, in Spain, we uh, realized uh, a full-scale prototype of oblique bridge. And so with all the complexity, uh, structural complexity of oblique bridge. And so you can see the deformation at the base of this structure using this kind of of uh, uh, ashlar conformation. And so uh, you can imagine that just to assemble this kind of vault, it's not possible to use the canonical and traditional uh, formwork, but we invent two different formwork that have, they move uh, horizontally just to create the uh, anchoring, because it's not possible to put the last K stone from a vertical, uh, um, vertical position. And so, it, uh, according to the canonical engineering uh, uh, point of view, this vault cannot be stay, uh, um, cannot be resisted to the form. But after using this kind of geometry, uh, we, 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 we have uh, make the demonstration of the possibility of the reduction of the thickness and also the angle of uh, uh, oblique uh, of this bridge. The, um, Here you can see other different kind of experimentation, also the shape, in the Möbius shape, uh, uh, using this kind of conformation we made in Melbourne University, just an arch that prove exactly that also if we twist this kind of arch, thanks to this kind of uh, connection, uh, the ashlar and the arch will, will work very, very well. And so our interest, in, our interest in this solution lays on, on the one end, on the capacity of a structural system to provide an infinite formal generalization. On the other end, on the bone shape logic, the shape of the bones connection, among the connection, connecting surface of the ashlar. The osteomorphic design is optimizing the mechanical performance of the voltage system, improving the transfer of the pressure between the ashlar. And so 
it's not only a, um, a aesthetical condition, but it's on, uh, also uh, a mechanical condition to improving the, um, the, the, the mechanical behavior of the such voltage spaces. And uh, uh, we make uh, some, uh, another kind of uh, experimentation using uh, um, the marble and the osteomorphic connection of the joint to realize one catenary arc, pre-stress catenary arc, and presenting during uh, an exposition, the most important exposition of the marble construction in Marmomac in Veron. And so you can see the, the form of the catenary arch um, with uh, using this uh, ashlar, this block with osteomorphic condition. And this kind of operation, there is a, strongly, um, a strong morphological affinity between uh, the block that you can see here, of uh, the block of Truchet and the block uh, uh, and the re recent research of a research group of uh, Professor Yuri Estrin of Monash University in, uh, uh, in uh, Australia. And so a new family of stereotomic vaults set out from the typical interlocking of the ashlar of the flat one can be formalized by using the deformation by folding technique already exposed. This perspective aims to solve some of the most important theoretical issues related to the realization of voltage spacing, improving mutual anchorage and therefore the friction among the ashlar of the voltage system, reducing the wall thickness, uh, designing subdivision ashlar of the vault both as ornamental and so aesthetical and structural behavior, varying the shape of the vault system in a particular in parametrically way automatically obtain all the geometric data, both for the manual and the electronic cutting, CAD, CAM, CNC, and of in, uh, each individual block. Automatically provide all the numerical data aimed to the structural analysis and rationalize, rationalize the number of standard ashlar for the construction of many complex voltage structure. This last, uh, um, this last uh, idea is is very important. The, interesting, uh, the interest in this uh, kind of research is to try to achieve a complex voltage structure with the smallest number of standard ashlar in order to optimize the constructive process. In this specific idea, we have invented a system that optimizes both the reduction of stone wasp during the cutting, speedy manufacturing, and the use of only two ashlar geometry to build a complex spatial shape. The system is called Architectural Hyper System and is based on the geometry of hyper ruled surface that can be cut using, using diamond wire cutting robot. And so you can see that thanks to only two geometry, one specular to the other one, you can build different kind of uh, uh, geometrical shape. And uh, the idea is to use uh, the diamond cutting, wire cutting uh, uh, robot uh, to cut uh, uh, all the block, all the hyper ashlar, all the hyper uh, block, starting from one unique block, parallelepiped block, and without the creation of the wast. And so you can, you can see here that starting from only one block, we can cut because they are ruled surface, and so we can use the robot cutting we can cut all the ashlar and we can also store in a very easy way. And thanks to this geometry, we, uh, we, uh, we, we can make a lot of configuration using, uh, I repeat, only two geometries, not a lot of geometries. That's very important because for the improving of the construction building uh, uh, of this kind of a prototype, it's very complex if we have to, a lot of different kind of geometry. That's, the difference between one and the other one is just little millimeter or angle. And so we can have a straight wall, we can, uh, with the same geometry, we can build a straight wall or a sinusoidal wall. And we can assemble in very easy way. That was the first prototype that we, 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 we tried to assemble. Here we are in, uh, uh, in Veron, in Italy, in Marmomac for uh, the exposition of this, uh, 
the, the first year was inside to the exposition room of the Marmomark, and the second year uh, was, uh, in, and this year was outside. I prefer the, the installation outside, obviously. And um, if, if we try to, to, to continue to imagine some other configuration using this kind of ashlar, uh, finally we arrive also to the idea that we can create a barrel vault using the same two geometry. And finally, we, we built um, this year uh, in uh, Troyes, the city of Troyes in French, uh, this first prototype of uh, uh, porous uh, barrel vault using only two uh, geometry. And so the technique is always the same. We, we use, we start from the frame, using the framework, and after we start to, to assemble every uh, block, and in this case, the interesting is that uh, if you imagine the center of the hyper block is a line. And so we cannot really see immediately that you have a line inside here. And so because there is a line, the, the, the junction of every line inside of each block is the position of the cable for the pre-stressing, post-tensioning um, cable. And so the structure is pre-stressed structure. And you can imagine that we have a, just a notch line inside to the center of each block. And here at the base, we have the position to make the post-tensioning of the structure. And so, you can see the parabole, you can see the hyperbole, you can see if you, have, uh, if you have the capacity to see the cutting of the wire cutting machine, you can see the line. So you can see all the geometry inside these, uh, these uh, uh, vaulted spaces. And, uh, uh, and it's the... I repeat, this barrel vault is lightweight, is porous, is aerial, according to the teaching of my uh, master, is Philibert Delorme. Uh, Philibert Delorme affirmed that uh, the architectural production based on the use of stereotomy has been constantly focused on the game of paradox that could ensure a heavy stone work and in the same time to seems to be an aerial structure, he says, suspend una l'air, airborne. In this regard, the celebrated vaulted realized in Chateau d'Anet are paradigmatic. This is the, the fo central focus of my PhD dissertation. The trompe d'Anet is one of the paradigm of the stereotomy described inside the, the treaty of architecture in uh, 1567 of Philibert Delorme, the first treatise of architecture, uh, the French first architectural treatise. And uh, um, despite the heaviness of the stone, such architecture must defy gravity, sending dynamic and anti-static ones, derived from the ethereal sky. The dialectic contamination between the heaviness of the stone and the lightness of aerial and pneumatic form of the starry sky, stereo, or firmament, is the main lever of my research. For many years now, I have been investigating the morphological potential inherent this assumption as a conceptual foundation for the up updating of stereotomy and stereotomic design. As mentioned, the paradox is a constant in the logic of the stereotomic design, that's aiming to, formal, uh, to, a form, that's aiming to a formal lightness starting from an opposite material condition. The first poetic paradox of stereotomy was described by Charles Perrault in what I consider the best definition of the intrinsic meaning of the term. The stereotomy is the art of using the weight of the stone to enhance the lightness of the form, thus climbing the combination between weight versus lightness in the same architectural voltage system. And the, the de definition uh, is very interesting for the people who, who knows the French. It, the stereotomy, c'est l'art de se servir de la pierre contre elle-même, de la faire soutenir en l'air par le même poids 
qui l'a fait tomber. Je voulais I give you these uh, sentences just to, to push you to translate it. It's very poetical. <laughs> and uh, uh, with one of my recent stereotomic achievements, I think I have completely uh, interpreted the concepts of suspension and lightness according to the teaching of my uh, maestro, Philibert Delorme. I'm hanging on the here, uh, on the yard crane. I assure you that is not a photomontage. And <laughs> because uh, th that was one of the, my last, uh, and it is present of the poster, on the poster. This is one of the last uh, 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 construction that I made in, uh, in Troyes, in France, is the first uh, hyper made in stone, in pre-stressed stone. And so you know uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, hyper built during the modern period in concrete, but that's the first in stone. And so I'm very interested, I I'm very happy to, to, to have realized this kind of uh, structure that is I assure you, it's very, very complex to, for the construction and also for the computation. And so because is the, the stone are not glue, is, is they are not glued together. Because of this, the hyper uh, condition, you can find a straight line inside the joint of the ashlar. And so you, we, we you can put inside a, a, a pre-stressed bar cable, and thanks to this condition, the structure works very, very well. And, and, uh, and also, uh, in this kind of construction, because it's not uh, in concrete that you make the formwork and after the, the, the concrete, but you, you build it directly uh, with the uh, pre-worked perfect geometry, you have to be very, uh, put a lot of attention of the, during the assembly. And uh, real, the stone looks like uh, f flood, flying in the, in the air. And flying in the air, I put this image, uh, you can find a lot of things and these two guys find the love because uh, it was uh, proud to make the declaration to, to, the, fi to the fiance, you know. Uh, <laughs> and we arrived just at the end. At the end of my presentation, I will take you a uh, few minutes of your kind of attention. I would like to present the four research topic we are currently developing with me, my research group, New Fundamental Research Group. And, uh, uh, with the, the various company of the world of the stone. One of the first idea that we develop in the Puglia, in the south of Italy, is uh, uh, company inquiry. We built a very big uh, uh, company directly inside the quarry. And so here is the first example that we, we want to do that. The first example of a very big company, but not traditional one, because is completely robotic uh, company, and so all the, the best robotic, uh, si um, uh, robotic situation will be located inside the quarry. And so if you come in Italy, you are welcome to see uh, this kind of experimentation. So the company is inside the, 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 um, the site of, uh, of production. The second is the comp company that built itself. Uh, and so the know-how of the company allows to create all their own building. This was a building built in, uh, uh, um, in, in French, in Troyes, uh, the region of the Champagne. And so if you are, if you, if you, uh, are visiting in uh, French in the region of Champagne, you are welcome to see this experimentation. It's a company made by four big arches without any glue, without nothing. And, and every, uh, every arch was built in one day because we use uh, some, comp uh, some specific way to um, optimize the mounting of the big arch, it's 20 meters arch. And the same uh, company, uh, with the same company, we invent this new uh, system of construction without using of the centering, presenting in the last uh, Salon de la Pierre in, Tro uh, in Lyon, uh, and so the idea was, it's possible to build uh, 
vaulted system in only one day, because this kind of operation takes a lot of time for the mounting. And so we proved with using this system that in only one day we can build a, a, a very big, uh, for the stone construction, um, pavilion using this technique of pre-anchorage uh, of the joint and using you know, this kind of uh, metallic system just to uh, fix during the mounting. So here you have the picture, some picture during the assembly in the, in the day before the exposition. Because you know, during the, the exposition, the pavilion are made in wood, in something very quickly, never in stone. So we proved that also, also with the stone, we can be uh, very uh, rapid in, during the construction. Another kind of uh, uh, research, very interesting, is the combination of the carbon fiber and uh, uh, glass fiber with the stone. And so here we have some furniture presenting during some uh, uh, exposition um, using this technique. Uh, this is a stone from Sicily, uh, very beautiful uh, uh, stone and carbon fiber. And so you can see the thickness of the, of the stone. And without this combination, it's uh, quite impossible to have the resistance of this kind of material. And so also for some installation, double, very thin, we, 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 here we have four millimeter of uh, double stone with uh, um, glass fiber inside. And also some furniture is the, the last marble we present a table with one centimeter of marble and carbon fiber. And finally, we are working with Zadid uh, Code, Zadid Group, uh, for uh, the using of this kind of cladding stone in three millimeters in granite and carbon fiber and glass fiber. And for the first time, if you see the, the, the granite is three, two millimeters of granite, the, 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 the panels are very uh, are, are big. For the first time, the, the granite, uh, you can uh, see the light inside. And so th these are some, some pictures of the technique of the uh, working of uh, the stone. And the, the connection that we use is uh, with magnet connection. Here is uh, the project that I developed here with the student of NYIT for the new building of health profession, the new school of health profession is uh, one cl half clay surface um, with uh, using this kind of panel of uh, carbon fiber and granite, very thin uh, granite, three millimeters of panel. And another, uh, another research that we, we do is the pre brecked uh, stone using the west of the stone. So all, all the west of the stone, the very thin uh, um, marble that we uh, normally we don't use, we, uh, we, we can pre-break, pre, uh, make the pre-fracturation of the, of, the, uh, of the stone, and we can create an, uh, uh, I don't know the term, the limon is the helicoidal structure for a staircase. And uh, another, uh, the last research is the using of the worst material, the uh, the, the worst material of, the, the, of the, um, the work of the stone to be transformed in filament or in mortar for the 3D printer. And so uh, we, we are working about that you know, with the company, Italian company, the WASP, for the creating of dome structure using the mortar that uh, uh, use all the, uh, the west of the uh, stone uh, labor uh, working. And that is one of the last idea, utopic idea, to build some tower, you know, very, very tall, using some robotic uh, uh, 3D printer, if you want, ad with additive manufacturing, thanks to the, this kind of geometry that allow to, to, to the stratification during the construction. And so, just that's I assure you, is my last slide. <laughs> Finally, returning to the di uh, didactic point of view, the idea is to create a new expanding architect with robotic arts, Adauptus Architectus Novus, who speaks the language of technology 
and the Greek and Latin of our origin, like stereotomy tried to uh, teach uh, uh, us. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope everything will, is, 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 will, is, was clear. <laughs> uh, my biggest question is, what, um, what, is the, what do you find most compelling about stone? What's that? Uh, sorry? Uh, what do you find the most compelling about cutting stone? The, the difficulty? What's the the, the... the most compelling part. Like, what do you enjoy the most of cutting stone ah. and the material? Um, I don't know if I... Well, what's the... Like what's your, in terms of stone, what do you find the most interesting about the material specifically? Oh, wow. Well, the, the stone is, uh, I, I, you know, uh, I, I will tell you something. Uh, the stone, um, uh, a lot of people think that the stone is an ancient material, you know. But uh, as my teacher uh, says, uh, there are no ancient material or modern material, but it's the way to use the material that create a new architecture or ancient architecture. So I think that, uh, yes, we, we, uh, it's important to do new research or new material. But the stone, according to my opinion and the experience that I have, is the best material to build architecture. Because uh, also after 100 years, 1,000 years, it's become beautiful and beautiful, you know. The other material, has not this uh, capacity. And so for me, for, I think for every architect, make one building in stone will be the most interesting in the life because the stone will survive after you, you know? And so that's why you will be, the memory of you will stay there. And I think that I'm romantic, but I think that <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, th that's the best uh, idea of stone. Fascinating research. Um, my uh, question is, um, first of all, it sounds like modularity is a key factor in, in your research, right? So my question is about the process. Uh, how much does the form that you come up with is uh, the result of interactions between those modules uh, which create the final form? Mm -hmm. Or how much does the design form kind of imposes the configuration of uh, Modules. Yeah, you know, uh, during, yeah, exactly. If we, we, if we talk about stereotomy, we talk about discrete element. And so we cannot talk about uh, con uh, continued element. It's discrete. And so discrete element is modular elements. And so uh, in the, you, you can have a, a strict relation between the final shape, okay, and the modular shape. Because uh, um, stereotomy is uh, beauty because the global shape are complex and also the shape of each ashlar are complex. And so you can work in both ways, starting from the module and arrive to global shape and, and to, to the contrary. And, and uh, when you work in stereotomy, every time you you, you pass from one side to the other side continually, from the global shape and the modularity. At the end, the, I don't know if I answer to your question, but there are not one time you say, okay, now I start from this shape. It's continually uh, in variation in your mind, starting from the global shape to the, to the single ashlar. And um, I, I, I think that uh, um, the, the, the the stereotomic design is, is continuing the variation between these two parts, the global and the particular, the global and particular. So, but from a constructive point of view, I think that if you are able to find a family of few blocks in order to give you a more complexity shape is more smart idea to build the stereotomic architecture. Because I think that is, is very easy, but today is not that's the consideration. It's, it's very easy to make a complex architecture with 
a very complex number of, of uh, Ashlar. The difficulty is not that. The difficulty is exactly the contrary. How are I able to do a complex shape using only two, three, four Ashlar? That's, but today is exactly the contrary. Because the people, yeah, I, I make a good job with 300 million of block. OK, and now what's, what's the interesting about 3 million of block? Is uh, that the, com the computer give you 3 million block, and uh, it give you uh, exactly uh, in, the, in the good way to put the, uh, but after the people that uh, are in the area of building, they become crazy to, to <laughs> And so what's, what's, what's the, the smartest in this? If you are able to do a complex shape, an interesting shape, with a very few modules, that is interesting. And so when you work in a stereotomic way, you have to think about that. You have to think that in the, in the, in the building area, there are some people that, that will be able to, to assemble in very easy way your work. I, I don't know if... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Any yeah. I hope that after this suggestion in this school, some project in stone will uh, will be made. <laughs> um, is this on? Yeah, just oh. just uh, online. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so you covered a lot of factors of the subject of stereotomy, like the etymology of the word itself, and then um, the Greeks' interpretation that the domes were a translation of the sky, and Philip de Morin's, his trait drawings and all those. Um, I'm wondering which factor of the subject sparked your initial interest and where you developed like your conceptual grounds for what, um, the rest of your research. What's my... Yeah, what was your first like conceptual <laughs> interest, yeah. Yeah, I, I, all, all that I show you uh, was made by uh, the research that uh, I started. I, I will tell you about uh, uh, all the history about stereotomy starts uh, uh, 20 years ago with the, the, the researcher that uh, uh, made, from historical point of view, the research about the birth of geometry, descriptive geometry, or the birth of projective geometry, was a study linked to uh, the fields of geometric design. N nobody starts with the idea that it's at the base of the stereotomy, that the stereotomy is a tool to build, to, to, to make the architecture. And so I start with the, this new idea that stereotomy is a way to make architecture, new architecture, because that was in the history, in the history of, of uh, structure, of the, of the architecture. And uh, I think that uh, during this process, I, I, I was attracted from the study of the origin of the term, mm -hmm. because uh, I think that, I thought that this kind of technique was, we cannot imagine only like technical operation. But I think that there is a philosophical. Uh, and so for this reason, I study and I found this relation between the stereotomy, the term, Greek term, and the stereoma, that is the term that in ancient period was the sky. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was, was shocked because the terms are the same. And during that period, Curabel in French, he certainly doesn't speak Greek because he was a master mason. I say, but how invent these kind of terms there? And so, because uh, the, the only cultural base was the Christian doctrine, the Bible, Bible uh, test with the, was in Greek and Latin, only in this test you can find this term, stereoma, that was, but stereoma is the sky. Yeah. And so the idea is not to cut the stone, one solid, but is the cut of the sky the cutting of the sky. That's the idea. Yeah. Because uh, it's complex, but in, uh, if we try to analyze also Pythagorean and Platonic uh, way, Platonic, the question is, what is the, the geometry of the sky? Mm -hmm. The sky is uh, ethereal. There are no shape. 
And so they start to invent the geom the composition of the atom of the, of the sky in the same logic of the cutting stone to compose the dome. Yeah. And so the, the questions are the same. And so what I mean, in my uh, background, I have more organic uh, vision. And so I want to see all the point of view of one topic, not only one focalization. Otherwise, we don't understand what is the sense of our work if we don't understand everything, philosophical point of view, etymological point of view, uh, every aspect, technical, engineeristic, and so on, not only practical. You know, for this reason, I told to my student, when you think about stereotomic design, you have to think to the heaven not to think what shape I can do with this kind of geometrical uh, computer uh, operation. You have to think about the sky, you know, because that was at the origin of everything. Because the people imagined that the sky was with this form, you know. And so that misinterpretation was at the base of the, all the confirmation of the church, of the big, uh, you know, uh, room, uh, because they want to represent the sky with the fixed star, because they imagined that was geometrically linked and so perfectly linked. And so Galileo Galileo says, no, it's not like this, but that's very another history. And so I, I feel that this topic must be uh, taken in a global way, in an um, organic way, you know. Thank you. Hi, so I, I do have one question, and it's just, um, and you kind of just referred to it a little bit, but um, since the nature of the arch has been, you know, rooted in mathematics as to how to execute this and actually build it, even if the inspiration was driven from um, looking to the stars, how have you seen uh, the influence of software and technology impact this? So let's say if you do have some type of an idea for a design and you try to reach that, um, how do you feel the software is allowing you to reach those goals and do you see room for improvement in the execution of these forms? Yeah, thank you. This is, uh, um, I, I will say something. Um, um, at the beginning, stereotomy was a secret knowledge. Only for the people who take part of a group a secret group of Masons, like the name in French is Compagnon du Zouvoir, a, a, you know, a congregation of um, Tailleur de Pierre, congregation of people that cutting stone. And so it was very, very difficult to spread to every, everybody. So the people that at that time was able to do some construction in stereotomy was uh, very few people. And so after, with the birth of ge projective geometry, and so thanks to Girard de Sargues, that was not mass stone uh, mason, but it was a geometer, was not inside this congregation. At this moment, start the, the, work, with the work between the congregation of the knowledge and the uh, you know, geometers that are able to spread this. And so, between Girard de Sargues and Courabel, there was a very, very hard work. And so, what I is, why I tell you about that? Because if something is very hard, automatically the art will die. If you have the old language very difficult, they not survive because they are very hard. Thanks to the technological and tech, uh, the 3D modeling, thanks to these uh, uh, new tools, uh, the stereotomy was carried out and has now a new life. Otherwise, without uh, the 3D-dimensional uh, uh, software, it's very, very difficult to build something, to understand something that needs a lot of pro projection. Uh, I don't know if you, here you made the ge pro 
pr uh, projective geometry manually or uh, uh, descriptive geometry. For instance, the descriptive geometry, you know, when I think, when I uh, talk about the descriptive geometry, is uh, one of the basic topics and matter in all the school in Europe. You start with descriptive geometry, with the intersec intersection of solid, but only by hand, without computer, you know. I have a question, though. Have you, um, have you ever worked with any computer scientists or anything at a university just for, like, the advancement of the actual uh, computation itself, like, utilizing the power of computers to, like, maybe generate certain geometries that we couldn't even think about? Uh, we work a lot with uh, the computer and the program of gener generating, pr uh, you know, parametric uh, geometry. But the problem is uh, that uh, our way is uh, very, lim uh, we have a lot of limitation because the stone, because the stone working only a compression, uh, because uh, the material, because, uh, and so the material you cannot uh, uh, cut some angle uh, because uh, naturally the broken, a lot of, uh, and so this kind of uh, research on uh, uh, form finding and geometrical shape uh, is not free, you know. We have a lot of limitation with the stone, and so it's very hard to find new improving a new uh, new shape, but it's the work that we do now with the, also with the young collaborator, you know, that uh, you are able to use a very complex software. But it's always always linked to the stonemason. When we make something, we th we 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 speak with the, with, the, with the stonemason every time. Because if something is not possible to do, we, we cannot uh, make only speculation, you know. The speculation is interesting, but we have to prove that it's possible to do. Thank you. I, I hope to. Yeah, Giuseppe, I'm going to ask a question only, I would normally do it last, but I think because it fits to what you just said. I was lucky enough to speak to your mason, and he uh, talked to me a little bit about um, the tolerance uh, of the stones when they come out of the robotic cutting. And I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about how important he is in terms of the success of the projects and how that maybe ties back to how this technique was originally in Mason's knowledge to begin with, right? Um, but, I mean, one thing he said to me, it's not uncommon to have a millimeter that he has to, to hand um, modify the computer cut block but that substantially changes the labor model, but also raises the stakes on having highly skilled masons, which is, is an interesting phenomenon. Yeah, well, uh, I will say, when, when uh, we, mm, we, we create the, the final executive model uh, just to make the production, uh, for us, the joint is always one centimeter, always. So we, we don't uh, uh, create the tree model with the zero joint, you know. <laughs> it's impossible because uh, uh, the tolerance is very important. Otherwise, uh, we cannot. And so now we have the expertise. And so what we cut is perfect to be built, you know, after a lot of experimentation. But uh, when we think about the zero joint thickness, it doesn't exist. We have always uh, to preserve the joint during uh, the fabrication. And, um, and the other question is, uh, it's not very easy to understand the world of the stone because it's very complex. Because the stone arrived from a quarry. And the quarry is normally a sedimentation, you know. And so, because we, we use the limestone, so we have the, the layer of natural sedimentation. And so the, the, the stone arrive cutting from the quarry, but this layer of sedimentation will be always perpendicular to the direction of the pressure of the stone. And so we cannot put inside the block the ashlar in uh, what we want, but in a precise, uh, specific uh, position, because we cannot put, for instance, 
the direction of the ashlar in a parallel way of the direction. Exactly. And so this is one of the first limitations that create the difference between other material, artificial, homogeneous material that we can cut, you know, and stone. Because the stone, we have to respect the, the nature and the best performance of the, And so it's complicated the way. And sometimes, and also during the history, you can lost a lot of material just to carry out, you know, the block that you need in the perfect way of the direction of the pressure. Okay, and so sometimes you lost a lot of material, but you cannot do nothing. But the idea is the recuperation of this material to create a new life of stone with the 3D printer, what I, I show in the last uh, slide. Any last questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. Just in any case, I, I want to say yeah. the last. Uh, in uh, I, I'm organize uh, a symposium, uh, stereotomy 2.0 in NYIT, the April 20. And so I will give you some information if someone will will come. I will be make an exposition in the Par Excellence Gallery of Art in uh, New York, in Manhattan, with some interesting. Uh, um, uh, some interesting visiting uh, is uh, Shay J of Zadid Code, the director of uh, uh, Zadid Code uh, uh, Act Two. And so we will do something interesting. If you we want to make uh, some exposition, if you are interesting, I will right, right send you finals, some reference. Perfect, right? <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you, Giuseppe. Thank you so much for your. And sorry for my terrible English. <laughs>